It's hard to believe, but it's been more than six months since 21 lives were taken tragically at Robb Elementary School over in Uvalde. The families of the victims, survivors, and people in Uvalde have struggled to get answers as to what happened inside the school on May 24th and what will happen to make sure a tragedy like that never happens again. These are subjects we explore in our one hour special that is airing tonight. We invite you to watch 21 Taken, Uvalde's Path to Healing. And joining us now to talk more about the special are the two people involved in the project. We have Stephanie Jimenez and Lee Waldman. Thank you so much from the Night Beat joining us this morning. Thank you guys for Good being morning. here. Let's get down to it. What was the goal of the special? Well, this is our community, mm -hmm. Uvalde, right? They're just 80 miles west of San Antonio, and we have been there. Well, Lee has been yeah. there uh, ever since this has happened. She practically lives there. Um, but this is, the people there have been hurt so much, not just by the tragedy, but what's happened since then, the aftermath. I mean, you remember the numerous blunders. They're trying to get answers uh, from, from local law enforcement, the school district, the state even. And so this was an opportunity to look back. I mean, it's hard to believe it's been six months already. Mm -hmm. Speak to the people. Um, who have been most affected by this, which includes uh, family members, but also the people of the town because they've been struggling as well. And also to memorialize the 21 lives yeah. that were lost, plus Irma's husband, Joe, who, who died shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure to remember those people as they want, their, their families want them to be remembered, honor their memory. So it's not just they were taken in this tragic way. We know what their likes and dislikes were. We know what they wanted to be when they grew up. We know what their favorite memories were, were with, their, with their children. So we wanted to make that a very key focus of, of this special. So we can look to hear from the family members of the victims, definitely in the special. Absolutely, yeah, you're gonna hear from family members of victims, you're gonna hear from family members of survivors. Yes. There was 11 children who survived uh, this in the classrooms who were injured, six teachers who were also injured in this tragedy. So you'll hear from, from that survivor point of view, but as well as, as community members too. Yes, we actually did a town hall, and so you're going to hear, if we could show that clip right now, you're gonna hear from people from the community who have been greatly affected by this and want to get their message out. As the weeks went on, there were less crowds, the funerals happened. What have mornings been like in your neighborhood since then? Um, well, right following the aftermath and as, as the crowds dissipated somewhat, I mean, there was still a lot of activity. The, uh, there, there was still investigations going on, um, but a, a, and there was still media presence there, um, but it had some of it had dissipated. Um, the dead silence is what uh, affected us. because you, you always heard the kids playing. Oh, there she lives just three houses down from yeah. where Rob is. You can see the, the front of the school from, mm -hmm. from her front of her home and from her backyard, you can see the playground where the shooting had started, where that shooter came in and, and initially started shooting at, at the children at the playground there. And, and, and Michelle, her favorite part about living in that community was every single day at recess, you could hear the kids playing and she's been robbed of that ever since. Yeah, because you know, if you've ever gone by a school, you know that if you go there during the middle of the day, there's that noise, right? Yeah. It's like a white noise. That It's the same pretty much outside every yeah. elementary school and it's no longer there. And I understand what she's saying. It's it's eerie, mm -hmm. but this was important to show because of how affected everyone, not people who were affected obviously directly, but also people who maybe didn't have any direct connection right. to the victims, but live in the community. That was just one example of what, what I would call unspeakable grief. You know, the, the title of the special is 21 Taken, mm -hmm. Uvalde's Path to Healing. Now, all these months later, and I know we asked it when they went, kids went back to school back in August, but where are we at? in the healing process now. It's a process. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are two centers that are set up so that people can go there and uh, get, get therapy. So this is long term, right? The state and other organizations have made commitments to be there for years on end to make sure that there are therapy centers set up for anybody who wants to go. But we know that it's a process, right? You've spoken with people mm -hmm. who say, hey, it could take people six months, a year to even start to process mm -hmm. their grief. 
Absolutely. And so those two centers that you're talking about is the, the Child Bereavement Center, which is solely focused on the children of mm -hmm. Uvalde, and then also the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center, which has committed to five years being there. They did a similar setup when Sutherland, Sutherland Springs, that tragedy mm -hmm. happened. And so they're, they're renovating a center right now to have a permanent facility that is there for anyone in the community who needs it, whether it be therapy, whether it be help with unemployment because they're too grief stricken to go back to work. And, and their big focus was the fact it's it's not a straight line for grief you know you could make yeah. huge leaps and bounds and then one day something sets you back of course. and that's okay and it's okay that you're you're not where you think you should be six months from from when this tragedy happened your path to grief is unique as as all of us are just want to add one thing to that you know in a lot of rural communities there are very few mental health resources and that community was one of them before this tragedy before before Absolutely. yeah they didn't have very many very much access to psychiatrists psychologists things like that and so now they do and Stephanie, you mentioned it earlier too, Lee. Lee, you've practically lived there with all the coverage, and you know, which has been wonderful so far. You know, I just wanted to tell you that, compliment you. It is part of the job, but I imagine very difficult just being there. How, what is the most difficult part of talking to these families? I think it's it's difficult, but it's also rewarding in talking to the families and hearing about their kids um, and and getting to see their their last few drawings or to, to touch their pieces of clothing or they get their backpacks back from that classroom. That has been so difficult to to try and, and help them through that grief. There's no amount of sorries or I love you's you can tell them that's ever going to take that away. But that's also been the most rewarding part is learning about their loved ones, who they are. But I think when we talk about grief and their healing, they haven't really had a chance to breathe and grieve yet because they haven't had all the answers yet. They're still fighting for that accountability, mm -hmm. fighting for that justice, fighting for that transparency. So they haven't had a chance to even focus on trying to heal from this wholly because they're still fighting for their kids, fighting for their loved ones, those, those two moms that were also taken. So I think that's been a difficult part is all of the setbacks, all of the things that get leaked or the new information that comes out. I think that's been hard on them too. And, and that's something they've expressed to us. We have about 30 seconds left. Stephanie, real quick, what do you want people to know before they watch tonight? I want them to watch and know that it's going to be a journey when you watch it. It's kind of like you're going to be reminded of what these people have gone through in the last six months and the questions that they still want answered, but also be prepared because some of your questions are going to be answered and you'll all, you're also going to know what leaders are doing to make sure that this does not happen again. That's a key part of this. So we just want people to keep an open mind and also a box of tissues because it's definitely an emotional journey when you yeah. watch this. Steph Lee, thank you for coming in. Our special does air tonight right here on KSAT 12 at 7 o'clock. It will also be live at that time on YouTube and KSAT Plus. So make sure that you do tune in. Again, thank you, ladies. Yes, thank you. Us. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.